Hey everybody, so I had a really uh, great conversation with a patient last week um, that I thought would be uh, a great topic to discuss with you guys. Uh, because I think it's something that a lot of people are suffering from in relation to uh, chronic pain and things like that. And, and what that is, is this concept around uh, entrapped nerves and neurogenic inflammation and the resulting changes that it can occur in the musculature uh, around uh, that area. And so, um, you know, a lot of patients will uh, come in and, and uh, have trigger points or muscle tightness and things like that. And, and they have tried treatments for that in the past, whether that was trigger point injections, whether that was massage, whether that was ART or rolfing or any other type of, of myofascial work. And unfortunately for this subset of patients, uh, it wasn't effective enough and it didn't help to resolve their pain. Now I'm not saying that those uh, therapies can't resolve pa uh, people's pain. Obviously uh, there's a, a selection bias when someone comes to me uh, because if they're coming to me, it means they're still in pain and they haven't, you know, uh, benefited greatly from those therapies. And they're just in that, that subset of population where they didn't benefit. And so it's not that those therapies are, uh, you know, not effective in, in certain patients. It's just that the patients that come to me, it wasn't effective. And so in these situations, I, I really start to dig into uh, why this uh, muscle tightness, these trigger points, um, muscular imbalances are occurring and how we can try to more effectively treat the root cause of what's going on. And now one of the reasons that this could be uh, is actually due to uh, ligament laxity. And so the ligaments, they're, one of their main jobs is to support our articular structures or our joints, right? So the ligaments around the shoulder, they're there to keep the shoulder in its socket through the different ranges of motion. Now, if there is uh, ligamentous instability or ligamentous laxity, which basically just means that the ligament's been overstretched and so it doesn't uh, hold its shape as well anymore, um, the surrounding muscles can tighten up to compensate for that lack of stability from the ligaments and the muscle tightness around that joint now uh, strengthens the, uh, the actual um, uh, integrity of the joint, we'll say, uh, because uh, the stability, because uh, you know it's it's lost it in, in other areas, and that's so that's that's one avenue that we look at. The other avenue is neurogenic inflammation. Now, as a refresher, neurogenic inflammation is basically inflammation that is coming from the nerves. Okay, so neurogenic, generating from the nerves, and inflammation. And uh, in these scenarios, when we have uh, our physical exam and our history that support this neurogenic inflammatory component of pain, and there is uh, muscle tightness and trigger points that co also correlate with it, meaning if we have uh, you know, an axillary nerve entrapment that's causing neurogenic inflammation, and we also have a bunch of trigger points in the muscles that axillary nerve is gonna feed into, then those two things start to make more sense together. And the, the way that I approach that is we actually address the neurogenic inflammation. And the reason for this is because when these nerves are inflamed, they are not functioning as well as they could be, which that can uh, contribute to the development and propagation of these trigger points. And so if you go in and you just treat the trigger point, you're just kind of sprinkling water on this, this big fire of neurogenic inflammation. Yeah, you may be putting out you know, the fire in this one part, but the fire that is down below, which is gonna be the actual neurogenic inflammation, is going to creep back up into that and, and the trigger point's just gonna come back. And so in these subset of patients, that the not dealing with this neurogenic inflammation is why uh, I believe that uh, they're not responding to the typical things that help with trigger points, whether that's injections, uh, myofascial release, body work, and, and things like that. And so when we go in and we actually address the neurogenic inflammation, 
Uh, and the way I address that is with, either with a nerve hydrodissection of the upstream nerve, um, or we do perineural injections uh, with 5% dextrose or, or PRP. Um, and sometimes we've even used uh, autologous stem cells, so uh, bone marrow or adipose tissue for the nerve hydrodissection. When we address the actual neurogenic inflammation component and we make a huge dent in resolving that, that's when we start to see the trigger points go away because the dysfunction in the nerves is resolving, which uh, in these patients is the core of the issue for the actual trigger points. So when we treat the cause, the symptoms that are just the trigger points start to go away. And so, uh, so that was just the conversation that I, that I had with this patient that I think I, I have actually uh, these, this conversation with a lot of patients um, because when I do a physical exam or something like that, um, and I'm pushing on different areas and, and I ask them if it's painful, they're like, yeah, but that's just, you know, that's just muscle tightness. And they kind of dismiss it. Whereas I think that's actually really important to understand because that helps tie in this framework of, uh, you know, the symptoms associated with pain, but also the deeper cause that is the cause of those associated symptoms that are contributing to pain. Um, yeah, so that's what I got today. Hope you enjoy your day. See ya.